Good morning. I'm German. Good morning, Feppers. Welcome back to Papa Flammy's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, he here. Yeah. So we have all heard about it. It's a tale as old as time. First grade boys walk into anal and they see, well, if we have x times y and we take the derivative, obviously that's going to turn into x prime times y prime. We just differentiate each and every part, right? This is how differentiation of products work. This is kind of a freshman's dream, but I was asking myself for this occasion, the advent calendar, does this work out? Is there a solution to this very problem, especially if wa is a function with respect to x, turning this into a differential equation? Let us find out, shall we? So, at first we are gonna not use the freshman stream of product rule for differentiation. Obviously, we are gonna use the real product rule on the left-hand side. Turning this problem right here into x prime times y prime is equal to, and using the product rule, we get x prime times y um, plus x times y prime. And now, since y is a function with respect to x, and x is hence just a variable which y depends on, if we were to differentiate x, obviously this just turns into 1. So this right here is 1, that right here is 1, giving us a simplified expression of y prime is equal to um, y plus x times y prime. And this right here is our differential equation written in a different form. And now we are simply going to separate it. First things first, what we are going to do is we are going to subtract x times y prime on both sides. Reason for that is if we do so, we have a y prime minus x times y prime is equal to y. Now you are going to notice that y prime is a common factor on both of those. We can factor that out, giving us overall 1 minus x times y prime is equal to y. And now we can easily separate it. We are going to divide both sides by y. We are going to divide both sides by 1 minus x under the condition that x is not identically equal to 1. And also y must not be the zero function. If all of this holds, we are going to get it y prime divided by y is 1 divided by 1 minus x. Okay, that's far as good. And now we are simply going to integrate just how we are used to all of that. So by integrating both sides with respect to x, what are we going to get? We are going to get um, y prime is the same as dy dx divided by y. All of that integrate with respect to x. Overall, the dx is going to cancel out. We have talked about this immensely here on this channel. You can just introduce a proper substitution. Let y prime equal to blah, 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 new variable, and everything is going to cancel out. No, let, let, let y equal to a new variable, and everything is going to cancel out nicely. So overall, this integral turns into dy divided by y is equal to the integral of dx over 1 minus x. Now on the left hand side, we are simply integrating the function y of x with respect to y, meaning we are going to get the natural log of x uh, of, of y out on the other side. So we are going to end up with the natural log of y of x is equal to the integral of 1 over 1 minus x. This is obvious, it turns into a natural log in some kind of way, but we are going to introduce some substitution to make our life a bit easier. So let the denominator 1 minus x be equal to t. Hence, we are going to get that dt is equal to negative dx or we have dx is equal to negative dt, vice versa. So this thing right here is nothing other than negative the integral of dt over t, which is just negative the natural log of t. So this right here is ne a negative the natural log of t and t is nothing other than 1 minus x. Okay, very nice. But don't forget something. This right here is an integration without upper and lower bounds, meaning we have to add an arbitrary constant c formally on both sides, but you can subtract the first constant to the right hand side and absorb it into this one. And now we could just use the exponential function on both sides and then we could already 
call it quits and then we are done. But I'm going to simplify this a bit further. We are going to use logarithm properties on the side. C is the same as the logarithm of e to the c by using the logarithm properties. So this right here turns into the log of what? is equal to, and I'm going to put this part front. So this is log of e to the c minus log of 1 minus x. e to the c is yet another constant. I'm going to call this constant right here kappa, which is element of the real or complex numbers, depending on your family of solutions. And if we subtract a logarithm from another one, this right here turns into the natural log of kappa divided by 1 minus x. Meaning if we were to you now use the exponential function on both sides, we are going to get as a solution that y with respect to x is hence kappa divided by 1 minus x, where kappa is element of the complex numbers. And this right here is the solution to our differential equation. And feel free to differentiate it and plug it into here and see if it gives you the freshman stream of product rule for differentiation and I hope you did enjoy today's video and up until next video on the Edwin calendar and wish you guys a favorable day. See ya!